Okay, so with that said, let's get it started. Now, what is a text editor? Who can tell me what a text editor is? Um, it lets you edit text. Yeah, there you go. Exactly, that's it. So it does. It's a program that lets you edit text. So it does. Now, with that said, there's something that we need to that we need to describe. A document, a text file is a document, but not all documents are text files. There is a difference. For example, Oh, where are you? Where are you? Mm, found you. Perfect. So we created a couple of documents there. So let's go to our folder here. This over here, they are all documents, including this. These are documents, all of them, because document is a word that we use for something that has meaning with us, right? You call a document a letter, you know, you call a document, a lot of things can be a document, right? It's something that we understand. The computer also understands the word document in a different way. See, this is a text file. This is a docx file. This is an ODT file, and this is a PDF file. There are differences between these files. That, that, that go more beyond the program that they are open and the data they have. This is called a plain text file. And the reason why it's called a plain text file is because when you open this file, you only have text. That's the only thing you have. As a matter of fact, if we do this, notice that in this document, how many characters do I have here? 14. How many bytes is this document? 14. 14, because every character is a byte. See, oh, okay. that's what happens with plain text. Plain text are just text, keystrokes. That's all they are. And each one of those characters is one byte. In these guys over here, look at the size of the docx document. Let's do ls minus lh document, and there you go. Look at the size of this. We don't have that many characters inside that document, but yet the size is 4.1k. And look at the PDF one, 8.1k. Jesus Christ. See, there's a big difference. And the reason why is because these documents, they have formatting added to them. They have a spacing here. They have a lot of code that gets added to the document so that the particular program can open it and you can work with it. So all of that creates a new type of document. This one in particular is a DocX document. It's a Microsoft DocX document. And Microsoft has added a bunch of code to that formatting in a standard for that particular type that makes it this big. This is not just text. So there is a difference when we talk about text editor and document editor, right? So a normie thinks that these are the same things. From today on, you will no longer be a normie. You will no longer be calling a document the same thing. You will be using the real world because now you understand that there is a difference. For example, in Windows, you have a program called Notepad. 
who has who has used the the program Notepad in their life? I have. That is that that program is a text editor. It can only understand plain text. You cannot open a docx document inside a, te a, a text editor. It's not gonna work because the text editor reads the text as is. So it's gonna read a bunch of gibberish. It's not gonna read the text because it doesn't understand the particular standard that this document is using for encoding that plain text data. A document editor can understand plain text and can also understand formatted text because it requires, that particular document editor requires all the other standards to be installed as well in order for it to work on it. Does that make sense? For yes. example, ODT is a LibreOffice format. Before Office 2016, Microsoft couldn't work with ODT unless you installed an extension to Microsoft Office to read that particular type of format. Well, because LibreOffice is amazing, it can open any type of document you can think of. ODT is problematic on Windows because Microsoft, or Microsoft writes pretty terrible software. It's a little bit problematic in Mac OS because Apple Pages is not that good of a text ed of, of a document editor. Now, anybody has any question pertaining the differences between plain text and, and, and you know and formatted text? Let's move along. Source code, right? Code that you code that you write is written in plain text. It's not written in formatted text. Your markdown text that you are writing is written in plain text, right? That is considered plain text. For example, if I create a markdown file over here, damn, somebody transported me to the Dominican Republic for a second outside. You guys hear that noise? Yep. Yeah. Hello, that markdown. This is a markdown file, right? If I open it, I can use markdown syntax on this, on this, on this particular document with no problem. I can say, hey, I am a title, a heading. I am a paragraph. Right? I am a bullet point. Right? I can use markdown syntax on this, but that doesn't make it formatted text. It's still plain text. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. If we are already understanding all of this, let me introduce you to GNOME's default text editor, right? This particular text editor has a ton of features and it's very useful and it's also very lightweight. We have the status bar in the ball in the bottom that tells us the type of file that we're working with, the tabs with, and a bunch of other information. You know, you we have a menu over here that we can open a new window if we want to open a new file, right? Uh, we have also, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you can, you know, go through over here. You can change the preferences. You can change how, how it works. You can change the, the particular um, theme if you want. You can change the font if you want. There's a lot of things you can do. And you can install plugins to it as well if you so desire. So there is a lot that you can do in this, in this uh, you know, graphical text editor. And they are cool and all, but they, def they, but they have a graphical interface, right? They require the use of the mouse and the keyboard. When you are working on a server, you don't have a graphical interface. You only have your terminal. And Linux is an operating system that is full of files. Everything is a file. All you do in Linux is work with files, configuration this, configuration that. And if you code on Linux, you use the terminal a lot, which means that we need the command line text editor. Thankfully to us, we have a lot of them. Today, you're going to learn the most common one and the one that you should know about. Now, this graphical text editor is very intuitive. Over here, you can write whatever mumbo jumbo you want. If you want to save, you can click on save. It's very intuitive. As a matter of fact, if you have, if you don't understand what we have done so far in this, in this graphical text editor, you might as well log off and see you next semester. Because this is very straightforward. This is very simple. Everybody has used at least a similar program to this in their life before, right? Am I exaggerating? Maybe, maybe not. No. I don't think so, no. Yeah. Now, the problem with the command line text editor is that we don't have this 
drag and drop features that we had before. But we're going to take a look at them in a little bit. So I'm going to close this because we don't need it anymore. And before I talk about Vim, you know, the, the text editor that we're going to talk about, I want to talk about Nano. Nano is the default text editor of Ubuntu. So in, to start Nano, all you have to do is type Nano. As simple as that, Nano. And that's the program. That's it, that's the program. Your, your terminal became a text editor now, this is the program. If you wanna type some text, hey, why not? Hey, I, I like Nano. Simple as that. If you wanna save this file, Take a look at the particular shortcuts you have in the bottom. The caret symbol over here means that you have to use the control key on your keyboard before you use the key. If you want to get help, control G. If you want to exit, control X. If you want to write out, write out means save, by the way, control O. Let's save this, control O. Now it's going to ask you, hey, you didn't give me a name when you open Nano. What name do you want to give to this file? I want to call it, uh, my file, that txt. Press enter, and the file and the file has been saved, but it didn't exit. If you want to exit the game, we said we did what? Control X, right? If you want to cut, Control K. If you want to paste, Control U. You want to replace, Control and then the the the, the backslash W, uh, Control W if you want to search and so on, right? So it's very intuitive. It's really really intuitive. Any questions so far about how to use this command line text editor? No? I want everybody who has a Linux terminal in front of you to open Nano, write your name, and then save it, name the file, your name, and then exit. To exit, Control X. You have a minute. Again, open your terminal, open a text editor, Open Nano, write your name, save the file, and exit. Okay, who's done? I, yeah. How difficult was that? Uh, Easier when I tried Vim before. Very straightforward, right? Okay. Yeah. That's all you need to know about Nano. Nano sucks. It's very limited. It's crazy limited. Normally, Nano is used for something you need to do quick and go and, and, and get on and get on with your life. Nano is very, very, very limited. Very limited. What we're going to learn is Vim. Here is a problem with Nano. Nano is defaulting Ubuntu, but not defaulting a lot of other systems. Most Linux distributions ship with either VI or Vim by default installed on it. If you're working on a server, chances are that if it's not Ubuntu server, Nano is not going to be installed because Ubuntu server still ships Nano by default. Why? Because Nano is easy to use. But with ease of use comes limitations. Everything that's easy to use is also very limited. That's almost universal. Now, you have an introduction to text editor. You know the difference between text edit, uh, you know, a plain text file and a document, and you also know how to use Nano. Let's get started with what we, what, what we came to do. Okay, the VI command line text editor is included in all POSIX compliant operating system. A POSIX compliant operating system is a family of standards specified by IEEE to maintain compatibility among operating systems. Learning VI takes time. Yes, it takes time because it's hard, but it is crucial. There is not a single system administrator, a decent system administrator that doesn't know at least the basics of VI or VIM, because you have to. 
VI has evolved into many different forms. Some, some people in the, in the Linux community, like me, we like to call this VI Vim distributions. It's not an official name. It's just we like to call it Vim distributions. A lot of people, because VI is, the, is open source, a lot of people have decided to you know, add code on top of it to make it better. One of those versions is Vim or VI Improve. It's an improved version of Vim that just makes VI better. Now, if you want to install Vim in your system, it's simple. You should know how to install software by now, so I'm not even going to go over it. Now, why are we going to learn VI instead of Vim? Vim has more features. Vim is easier to learn. Vim is easier than VI to learn. Not that it's easy, it's just easier. Vim is also very lightweight. It's really, really light. Most Vim commands are backwards compatible with VI. That's the type over there. So if you know Vim, chances are you already know about 90% of VI. So you're in good hands. OK, take a look at this. Does that make sense? Do you see now why I shift the focus on teaching Vim instead of teaching VI? You get all of this with Vim, right? This is the only thing, the only benefit of VI is that it's default. That's it. But you know, you can install Vim with a single command. And it's available on every distribution. So don't even have to worry about it. OK, how do you start and quit Vim? OK, now, this is the question that a lot of people ask on Stack Overflow. For a while, it was the number one question that people ask on Google. How do you quit Vim? If you are a nerd like me, you have seen that meme floating around somewhere. How do you quit Vim? Somebody close the terminal because they don't know how to quit Vim. It's very simple. To start Vim, all you have to do is type Vim. Done. That's how you start. Notice that, what are you, annotation right here. Notice that you are, you are presented with a welcome screen over here. This is a welcome screen. Over here in this welcome screen, you have a couple of tips like this. Do you see it? If you want to exit, type Q and then, and then enter, and that will allow you to exit. right here. If you want to uh, see help, there you go. This allows you to see help. If you want to, uh, da, 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 where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, it's not here. No problem. This over here indicates the version of Beam that you're currently using, which is important. Some versions have other features that other versions don't. Okay. Now, with that said, let's take a look at something more interesting. I already opened the program. How do I start typing on it? Not so fast. Let's learn how to quit. To quit Vim, all you have to do is, let me delete this. Perfect. So to quit Vim, the only thing that you have to do is press the escape key on your keyboard. Again, the escape key on your keyboard. This is gonna put you into what's called normal mode that allows you to use your keyboard keys as commands and then press colon, so shift, semicolon, which is gonna write a colon over here. This is called the status bar. This over here in the bottom is called the status bar, right? And a bunch of information is gonna be displayed over here. And I'm gonna show it to you once, uh, you know, as we go for, as we go with it. Okay, now that we have type column, the only thing you have to type is letter Q, which is short for quit and press enter and you exit Vim. Everybody try that. Everybody that has a terminal open, give it a try. A start and exit Vim. Um, mine keeps saying 
no right since last change at oh wait add a exclamation point to override it colon q enter if you didn't type anything into vim that's how you exit if you started vim the same way i did it that's how you exit okay did it work yes there you go Okay, I'm assuming at least a couple of you tried it and the ones who did it will try it whenever you see the review of this, of this video. Let's continue over here. I wanna expand on what we just did right now. What you did is that you try, you typed a Vim command. And when you press the column, you exit normal mode and you enter command line mode because Vim operates in modes. To enter command mode, you have to press the space key on your keyboard, which first is going to send you to normal mode, and then type colon. What you write after the colon is a command. The command to quit is Q. Sometimes you have more than one file open. And if you want to queue all, if you want to close them all, you provide the option A, which is short for all. If you want to force, because sometimes you have changes that you didn't save, but you don't want to save those changes, that means you need to force quit. You lose the exclamation point to force quit. Most of the time, if you want to quit all now, you use column QA. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, let's move along then. Different Vim modes, normal mode, norm insert mode. When you're typing text, you are in insert mode because you are inserting data. That sounds a little bit self-explanatory because it is. Normal mode is used for manipulating the text. In normal mode, all the keys in your keyboard are actual, they do on a particular function in Vim, right? They are not no more input uh, keys. They are used for doing something to manipulate the text, right? So normal mode cannot be used for inputting text. None of the keystrokes are going to input text into the screen. They are going to perform a particular task, a particular function of Vim. In command mode, you use to type Vim commands like quit, like open, like edit. In visual mode, you are using for nav is used for navigation and manipulation of text by selecting a bunch of text in one shot. Select mode is very similar to visual mode. And then you have extended mode, which is a, com which is a command line mode that is optimized for processing a bunch, a, a large amount of text in one shot, right? You want to modify it like every line of your text for a particular way, you know, you use extended mode for that. Now, when you start Vim, you are automatically in normal mode. Let me repeat that. And this is over here. When you start Vim, you are in normal mode. That's the default mode. From normal mode, press letter I to go into insert mode. Let's take a look at that. Let's open Vim. And now we are in normal mode. Let's press letter I in the keyboard which is gonna, stay, which is gonna make, put us in insert mode. How do you know you are in insert mode? The status, the status line in the bottom is, indicates to you that you are in insert mode. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now that we are in insert mode, let's type something. I'm gonna type, I am drinking a lot of water today. As you can see, I'm typing, no problem. Everybody's with me? Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. The first Perfect. Step. If I want to exit insert mode, it's very easy. All I have to do is press the escape key and now I am in normal mode. Notice that the word insert disappeared from here. Now I am in normal mode. Perfect. Now, 
When you are in insert mode, you can use the arrow keys in your keyboard to move around the text, go to the next line, go to the previous line, go a couple of characters to the right, a couple of characters to the left. You can use the backspace key to delete text and you can use the enter key to go to the next line. That sounds very self-explanatory, right? Like do, you would expect that to work that way, no? Yeah. Because that's how it works in normal. Let's practice. Let's start Vim. Let's Let go into insert mode. Let's type three sentences and let's get out. Don't save, just go out, just quit. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I already typed one sentence, so I'm gonna type another sentence. I drive a nice car. I play with the children today and every day. Okay, I type three sentences. I'm gonna leave, right? I'm gonna exit. The first thing that I need to do is get into normal mode. Press the space key, the escape key. And now get into command mode. So colon and then Q. If I try to quit, it's gonna tell me no write since last change, override. Let's deconstruct this message because programmers are very cryptic and they write things in a way that only they understand. Now. First of all, what does no write means? Well, write is a, syner is a synonym for save. So no save since last change. What does it mean since last change? Well, last change means since last time you saved. And then it's giving us here, what is this? An advice. Hey, if you still want to do this, just override it. Does that make sense? Yep. Does, yeah. Okay. So let's override it. Boom. Done. Nothing was saved. Perfect. Any questions about this? Any questions? No, sir. Congratulations. You already know how to do the first part of lab six, because this is the first part of lab six. OK. Saving and quitting Vim, because sometimes well, not sometimes, all the time, if you're writing stuff down, you want to save it, right? Well, we have a command for that. The command is called write. And as you can see, I start with a colon and then W, which is short for write. This will save the file. If you don't have a file name, right? If you just open Vim, but you didn't provide a name to the file when you opened Vim, like we did with Nano, you will have to provide a name. For example, if I do Vim, uh, insert mode, potato, save. Let's take a look at the error message. The error message is saying, hey, you, monkey, where do you want me to save these bananas? You know, you didn't give me a place. You got to give me a name. Okay, I'm going to give you a name. And I'm going to call this potato file. And the file has been saved. Let's take a look at the status line message. The first thing that it does is that it tells you, hey, this is the name of the file you told me to give. It's a new file that you just created. It has one line, seven characters, and it has been saved. Does that make sense? Yes. OK, perfect. Clear, clear all. Thank can you um, rename it once you've already saved it? Somebody answer that question for me. Like from right there? Somebody answer that question for me. Can you do that on a graphical uh, uh, text editor? Yep. Yep. Then, you can, then you can do it in Vim. All you have to do is provide a new name. Okay. The same way that you do it on a graphical text editor. All you have to do is provide a new name, okay. right? You do save as, provide a new name. Here, right, pot new.
Can somebody tell me why I surrounded this with quotations? Because you have a space in it. Exactly. If I exit and I do ls, po start, did I say, oh yeah, pot. Did I, how, 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 what was the name that I gave it to it? Called it Apato. Uh, it was a text file, right? Yes. It was Popato file. Hmm. I don't see it. It's, it's located on the fifth column, the, four down. Yeah. So it's there. I just, I'm just yeah. blind. I'm just, I'm literally it's just under blind. pictures. Uh, pictures, pictures. Oh, there you go. I'm just blind. I wonder why did name it that way. That's not the you, way that you, we said you, to name you it. Put, yeah, you, you did. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> if I did, if I did, I did. Got it. Okay. So let's continue on the on the roll. Now, if I want to save with a name, I just provide the name. If I want to save and quit, because sometimes you're done doing whatever you were doing with the file and you want to quit. It's very easy. Just write, and then quit. And in that particular order, obviously you cannot quit and write because you know you cannot close the program and then save. You have to save and then quit, right? That makes sense. And if you have multiple files open, you can save them all and quit, right? And if you have, you know, and if it's giving you any trouble, force it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It is another. Here is a particular uh, practice tool. That's practice number two. And all you have to do is literally save the file. We did the same thing with it before. This time we are saving the file. And that's it. So I'm going to do Vim and I'm going to call my file foods. Actually, let's, let's do Vim and then provide the file name right there, right then. Call food. Actually, I already have a file called food.txt because I had to do the, let me create a directory and call it. Actually, we have a directory already, right? CD text editors, vim food.txt and this insert mode and this call this, I like bananas. I like platano, platano, I like what else do I like? Water, why not? And let's save it. Write and quit. And since I already gave it a, um, a file name at the beginning, it's not gonna ask me for a file name or give me an error. It's just gonna save it into food.txt. If I do a cat of food.txt, you're gonna see the content of cat of food that foods.txt. Uh, Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? Professor, it's not letting me quit. What's the error message? It's not giving me one. What is it doing? It has to be doing something. It's just literally moving to the next line. Uh, did you went into normal mode first and then in command mode? Again, uh, let, let's repeat the process. First, if I want to go into, if I want to exit, escape key to go into normal mode, then column to go to command mode, and then write in Q to write and quit. Okay, I got it, thank you. There you go, perfect. Any questions? Okay. Editing a file, right? So sometimes you are working on a file and you wanna open another file to edit. It's very simple. Just use the command colon E and then provide the name of the file that you want to open for editing. And it's gonna open and it's gonna edit. As simple as that. For example, I'm gonna create a file. I'm gonna do cat food.txt and I'm gonna call this food2.txt. Can somebody tell me what this command is gonna do? It's gonna save it. Into what?
into food. There you go. That's me. Yeah. It's gonna take the content of food.txt and it's gonna save it into food2.txt, right? So in, in essence, making a copy. So I'm gonna open food2.txt and I'm gonna add another line. So I first need to go into insert mode. And now that I am in insert mode, I can start typing. I like avocados. I'm gonna save it. But now I feel like I wanna edit the other file. So food.txt and now back to food.txt. Let's go back to the other one. First, escape key to go into command mode, colon and E to edit the other file and then provide the file name, which is food2.txt. And as you can see, Vim supports tab auto completion. Does that make sense? Any questions? Nope. OK. Oh, uh, wait, was, what was it? I'm sorry. What was what? The, the, the command to edit text? Taylor, what was what? Well, I'll do it again. It's escape key and then command, command mode, shift colon E. This is for editing, right? So we're gonna provide a file that we're gonna edit. And the name of the file that I want to edit is foods1.txt. As you can see, it opens the file and it allows me to edit. Any questions? Could you, um, um, sorry. Uh, could you tell me what that command is with the catfood.txt, a little arrow, food2.txt? What do you want me to, what do you want to know about this? And what does that do exactly again? Oh, no, uh, I'm sorry, it's cat, okay, you can catch me. No, that's not what it did. That's not what it did? This was last week's lecture. This was the last the, the lab that, that we just did. Let me explain. This is what this is doing. The cat command is used for what? Um, display contents or concatenate. Right. Perfect. The greater than sign is used for what? Uh, no, I don't remember. Isn't it to copy or move data? I'll put. Input and output redirection. I'm going to take the output of this command and save it to this file. Have you completed lab number five? Not yet. That's why you're asking that question. Yes, it is. Don't worry, you're gonna have a lot of practice on that. So you're gonna be a master <laughs> by the end of lab number five. Yeah. I will. That's a very cool, neat feature. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's continue exploring the thing command. Here is another practice over here. Have you noticed a trail? Have you noticed a trend in this presentation? No, I like practice. At the end of every of every little bit of information that I give you, there is a practice. There is a purpose for this. This is not the first or last time that you're gonna see Vim. If you're gonna go to your four, four year school after you're done in PCCC, you are gonna see Vim again, and you're not gonna see it in a nicely explained way like this. Vim is a pain in the neck, but. If you understand the basic things that we're doing right now, you can forget about it. You can forget it. It will take you one minute to remember it. I built this presentation like this because I want to give you the opportunity to practice at a specific part of them if you forget about it. Because you are going to forget some of these things, but not all of it. I guarantee you that. Especially because we're going to work on them a lot from this point on. You don't need to be a genius on this program. You don't. Most of the time, you're going to be using just the basic stuff. So let's move it along. 
In normal mode, the letters H, J, K, and L are used like the arrow keys to move around, up, down, left, right. But they have a little bit extra feature. They allow you to move any number of letters or characters at a time. If you want to move 100 characters down, you can. All you have to do is type 100, then J. Literally, 100 J. And it's going to move you 100 characters down. For example, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. let me take a look at something over here. Uh, HTTP, uh, w get HTTPS, HTTPS, Robert alberto.com slash ubuntu history i think is that's how history that txt i think that's the name of the file oh sorry cis 106 yep that's the name of the file wow good memory huh let's clear this and let's do vim ubuntu history txt this is a file that has a history of ubuntu I want to move 20 characters down. Look at the status line over here in the bottom. What is my pen? I found you pen right here. Look at the status line here in the bottom. 20. Oh, sorry. Twenty. There you go. I wasn't inside the VM. Twenty J. 20 characters down. I want to go 10 characters up. 10 K. How about to the left? Sorry, to the right. Let me move five characters to the right. 5 L. How about 20? 20 L. How about 100? 100 L. 500. Does that make sense? I really uh, didn't see what was going on on the screen. Like what was really changing? Okay, nothing was changing. I'm just moving around. This over uh, here, this blinking cursor that you see over here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, hold on, right here. This blinking cursor that you see over here, this is my insertion point, Yeah. right? I'm gonna yeah. move that insertion point 20 characters to oh, the right. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna move it this way 20 characters. Gotcha. Now I understand. There you go. 20. L. Come on. There you go. 20. L. 5. H. As you can see, it moves the number of characters that I give it is going to move to that particular direction. Let's clear this up. Perfect. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe. Some feedback? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. Much appreciated. If you want to learn how to, play, how to, how to use Vim with a video game, some programmer thought that was a clever idea. Go take a look at it. OK, sometimes moving around words is not enough. You might want to move around a whole paragraph, a whole sentence, for example. And we can do this. The commands or you know, in, in normal mode, we can use W and E. W allows you to move word by word from the beginning of each word. What does that mean? Where is my insertion point right now? It's at the beginning of Linux. I want to move to the next word, W, or the next one, W, or the next one, or the next one, or the next one, or the next one. Do you see how the insertion point is moving to the beginning of the word? Does that make sense? Yeah. If I want to do the end of the word, E. C. E. Letter E is going to move the insertion point to the end of every word. Does that make sense? Yes, Guess what? If you want to move 20 letters 
you can just do 20 e. 100. Do you see the you, do you see the bottom over here? 100 e. 200 w. And it keeps moving you moving you forward the number of character the number of words that you told that you told it to move. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. When you want to move between sentences, we can use the open parenthesis and close parenthesis. The open parenthesis is going to move to the previous sentence. The close parenthesis is going to move to the next sentence. Does that make sense? Boquito. <clears throat> okay, let's make it a lot. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the file. I'm at the beginning of the file. I want to go to the next sentence. Simple. In normal mode, normal mode, notice that here in the bottom, it doesn't say insert, right? Mm -hmm. Normal mode. Insertion point is right over here. Shift, close parenthesis. That's the next sentence, isn't it? Yeah. What about the next sentence? That's the next sentence, no? Mm. What if I want to go to the previous sentence? Open parenthesis. Do you see how the parenthesis keys in your keyboard look like an arrow to the back and an arrow to the front? Yeah. There you go. So you can take that as an indication. Okay, so why want to go one sentence back? I have to use the open, the open parenthesis. One sentence forward, I use the closing parenthesis. If you want to do it in a paragraph by paragraph basis, we use the open brackets and close bracket. So if I want to go to the next paragraph, I use the closing bracket. That's the next paragraph, isn't it? Right. That's the next paragraph. Next paragraph. Next paragraph. Previous. Previous, previous. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, does. What if you want to go two paragraphs ahead? Yeah, twice. Did you see the insertion point over here? Sorry, did you see the status line over here? The insertion point over here. I want to move one, two, and three. So I want to go from here all the way to here. I put yeah. three and then closing parentheses. Oh. That makes sense? Yeah, now it does. There you go. I want to go back. So I want to go from here all the way to here. How many numbers should I use? Three. Three. And then open parenthesis. Does that make sense? Yeah, now it does. Okay. I'm, got, I'm happy that it did. So I'm going to do Thank clear. You. I'm going to do clear all drawing and close over there. Does anybody need those drawings? Because I've been throwing them away. I hope nobody does. OK, now it is a practice. Write a couple of paragraphs, a couple of sentences, and move around. You can do it on your free time. Searching also in Vim is quite useful. We can search forwards and backwards. And we can search the specific word that is under the cursor is if we want. For searching, we use the forward slash. And then we provide the word. If I want to look for the word hello, forward slash hello, and press enter. If I want to look for the next time that that particular word appears in the text, I can do letter N. And that's going to take me to the next time that the word appears. If I want to search backwards, I use the question mark over here. And it's the same fashion. Question mark, the word that I'm looking for, and then the enter key. If I want to search the word that is under the cursor at the moment, I use the star. And if I want to I want to search backwards, the cursor under the, the, you know, the word under the cursor, I use the pound sign. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let's take, let's see it in practice. So. I'm going to go to the beginning of the file. Oh, sorry. There you go. And I want to look for the word Ubuntu. So I want to do forward slash and then the word Ubuntu. Notice that it automatically found the first one. I'm going to press enter. Now, 
Notice that in my status line over here, it is still telling me you are looking for the word Ubuntu. So if I press N, it takes me to the next occurrence of the word Ubuntu, meaning the next time that word appears in the particular file that I'm working on. If I press N one more time, notice that it is right over here. If I press N, it's right over here. N, look at it, look what it is. Now, if I want to search backwards, right? Because right now we are only go, we are only moving forward, right? I can do question mark and then Ubuntu. That in the same fashion as it did before, it found the first one right before it. And now if I do N, notice that it's moving to where the other one was, right? And if I press N one more time, it's searching backwards the next, the, you know, the previous time that the particular word appeared in the text. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, to search the word under the cursor, and this is the word under the cursor right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this, clear all drawings, and I'm going to look for the word Linux, right? So I'm going to put my insertion point under the word Linux. If I want to look for the next time that the word Linux appeared, all I have to do is do the pound sign. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does. Okie dokie. Okay. That's the URL for the file that I'm working with. Uh, you're welcome to download it and play around with it. Okay. A screen movement, because sometimes you're at the bottom of the, of the document and you want to go to the top, or you're at the top and you want to go to the bottom. If we want to move all the way to the bottom, we use letter G, capital G, uppercase G. If we want to go all the way to the top, we use good game, GG. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. If we want to move one page forward or one page backwards, we use control. F for forward, control B for backwards. Does that make sense? Yeah. What is the beer? You can't put you can't play bachata in no beer. Right. What, what's going on? What's Marty, going on? <laughs> what's going on? Huh? What's oh, going on here? Last time. You don't you, you know, me. don't you know your professor is Dominican? You don't do that. You don't do that. Look, if you want to move multiple pages at a time, guess what you do? You provide the number and then control F. Not too, not too complicated, right? No. Nah. But it's mm. easy to forget. It's, it's not difficult. It's just easy to forget. Okay. So let's clear this up. If you want to move to a specific line, in this time, we are not going to use normal mode anymore. We must use command line mode. And for that, we can use, oh, there, oh, no, no, go back, go back, go back, go back. There you go. What are you, perfect. As you can see, we go into, perfect. We go into command mode, and then we provide the number that we want. Additionally, you can also use normal mode. I normally don't, but hey, if you want to, by all means, go ahead. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Now, you might want to say, Professor, but how do I know which line I, can I go on? Like, like, I get it, you know, I can go to the particular line, but how do I know the line? Well, we can enable line numbers. Press the escape key, colon, set a space and you, and that's going to set line numbers. Oh, I had a typo there. Set and you. Bingo. Does that make sense? Yes. So you can see the line numbers appear on the side. Right now, the insertion point is in line number two. I want to go to line 13. 
Notice that over here in the status line, I, I typed command 13. The insertion point is in line 13. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, wouldn't it be cool if I could open Vim and go straight to the line that I want? For example, let's exit this. Quit. And I don't want to save nothing. But let's do Vim. Hello, world. That. Oh. Vim. Hello, that py. Let's do insert, print, right. Hi. Linux lovers. Print. I don't like this, right? Every Python user here knows that that's wrong, right? Missing the quotations, right? No. Imagine that I have, if I have, I'm working on a Python program that is 2,000 lines long, or let's make it simple, 500 lines long, right? So that's average, 500. A Python script that's 500 lines of code is nothing, right? Let me write and save this, and I'm gonna execute this. So Python three, hello world happy wife. Notice that the interpreter tells me, hey, you, I know you think you're very smart, but this is not valid syntax. Fix that. And he's telling me that where is the mistake? In line two. Wouldn't it be cool if I can open that file and go straight to line number two without doing anything? Vim, hello, that py, plus two. Notice. That the insertion point is where? It's straight in line number two. I can just go and fix my mistake. You better save some. As you can see, imagine if you're working on a program that has multiple errors in multiple lines. It would be a pain in a regular text editor navigating through those lines, right? Maybe, no, Do I don't have programmers here. What's going on? Yes. Wait, what was the question? I'm sorry, I'm taking, I'm, I'm like struggling because I'm trying to take notes at the same time as like. Again, if I have a, a problem on a part, if I'm working on a particular, on a particular program and I have a syntax error on line 500, wouldn't it be cool if I can go straight to line 500 from the command line instead mm -hmm. of me having to open in the file and then try to navigate all the way to line 500? We can, because all we have to do is provide a plus and then the number of the line that we want the insertion point to be at when we run them. And as you can see, go straight to line number two. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Bingo. Okay, if you wanna move to the end of a line, all you have to do is use dollar sign. So you can see over here, and that's gonna move you to the end of the line. Zero is gonna move you to the beginning of a line. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So that means that, let's break this one more time. I'm at the end. I want to go to the beginning. Normal mode, zero. I'm in the beginning. In normal mode, dollar sign. I'm in the end. Does that make sense? Imagine if you have a line that stretches all the way in the end, right? We don't have to do this. That's a little annoying. OK, deleting. Deleting is very easy. If you want to delete the current word, and by the current word, I mean the word under the cursor, right? Right now, the word under the cursor is print. And if I want to delete that word in normal mode, I just type letter D for delete. And then notice that over here in the status line is letting me know what I just typed. Letter D, I'm deleting. And then W for the word, and the word is gone. If I want to undo, U and undo. Kind of intuitive, right? If I want to delete the whole line, DD. 
whole line is gone. Undo. Why? If I want to copy the current word, I can do Y for yanking and then W for word. For, you know, that's it. If I want to paste, guess what word pastes? P. Exactly. P. However, if I do lowercase p, it's going to paste it after the insertion point. Let's undo. Meaning that the word print is going to be inserted after the p, as you can see now. What if I want to insert the word before the insertion point? Capital P. Does that make sense? Maybe, yes? Yeah, no? it does. OK. What if you want to copy the entire line? Why, why? Yang, yang. And paste. What's the thing to delete again? I'm sorry. D. D. Or D. 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 Delete the whole line. D. W. Delete the word. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Yes, it does. Ah, uh, yeah, it does. Yep, and that's it. If you want to cut, then X. X cuts. That's it. Moving along. Sometimes you want to change. Oh, wait, hold on. There is something I want to explain. Ooh, I forgot. This one over here. Sometimes you want to delete until a, until a certain word is found. Right? Let's exit this. Cute. And let's open uh, Ubuntu history. I want to delete everything. Let me go to the beginning. Go GG. And I want to delete from that to recently. Right? So I want to delete all of this, all of this until this word. As a matter of fact, I want to delete it until, yeah, until, the, until recently is fine. I can do that. I can do that. I don't need to select nothing. All I have to do is say, hey, D, and then the word recently. Enter. Gone. Should I undo? Again, I want to delete all of that, all of that. I want to get rid of all of that, right? All the way until this particular word over here. What is my eraser? Right here. I want to get rid of all of that. And I want to keep this word. Press letter D and then forward slash and provide the, the word that you want the, the deletion function to stop at. Recently. Done. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Somewhere, yeah. What part is that clear? I just have to digest it all. Yeah, I understand. It's a lot to that. It's a lot to uh, to to process. And there you yeah, go. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as him. <laughs> yeah, you gotta practice a lot. It's the only way to get this, you gotta practice a lot. That's why the presentation is built in the way that it is built, so that you can read it on your own and practice it on your own as much as you want. And if you have any question, you know, you can always ask. So that I have a question. Yeah. Uh, when you delete something until a recent word, okay. If you have the same word like it twice and two different paragraphs, it's going to choose the first one or yes. delete all of them? It's going to choose the first one. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sometimes you want to delete and you want to go insert in insert mode right away, right? I want to delete everything and I want to go straight into typing. That would be very useful, right? And yeah, we can do that. For instance, because if the, the regular way will be if I delete that, Right? If I delete that, there you go. I'm not in insert mode. I have to press Y and then type to, in order for me to go in insert mode, right? Wouldn't it be cool if I can delete and go straight into insert mode and save myself that particular, uh, 
you know, that step, we have a command for that. And that is letter C. So if you use letter C, hold up, come on and space. I want to delete history and I want to go straight into typing. So I want to do CW and that's going to get rid of word, but notice that the insert that the mode in the bottom change and I am in insert mode now. So I can type. Does that make sense? No? Yes, thank you. Okay. Now, you can do the same thing as we did with D. If you want to delete until a particular word is found and then go into insert mode right away, you do the same way. You know, you do uh, C. You do letter C and then the particular word that you're looking for and you're done. Okay, so uh, it's uh, five minutes for us to finish the lecture and we have a couple of present slides to go. So I'm gonna go through them. If you wanna replace, right? Because sometimes you wanna find a word and replace it. We can use S for, for substitution. We provide the old word and then the new word in between four slashes. For example, over here, I wanna replace the word Linux with the word Windows. So I'm going to do colon S for substitution, forward slash, and then I'm going to put the word that I'm replacing, which is Linux, with the word Windows. Notice when I press enter, oh, why the, font, the, the pattern wasn't found? That doesn't make sense. I have the word Linux there. Oh, wait, I missed something. There you go. I missed the percent sign. Notice that it changed the word Windows, but it only changed it the first time. Notice that the second time the word Linux was found, it didn't change it because you didn't provide the option for global substitution. In order for you to substitute the word Windows in the entire file, it's very easy. Percent sign, substitute, Linux with Windows globally. Every instance of the word Linux with capital L has been substituted with the word Windows. Imagine if you have a file as large as the Bible in plain text and you want to substitute every instance of one word. For example, you have an entire document that is 3 million, 3 million lines long and you want to substitute every instance of the word um i don't know company because it was misspelled go ahead and open it in 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 word i can just run a command well i wouldn't be able to run it on the command line because vim doesn't open docx but if it was a plain text file you know i'll be able to do it with no problem imagine that you have a list of users that is very very long and you want to replace a particular line or you want to replace a particular thing that is wrong in every line. This is very handy, right? Yes. Okay. Now, sometimes you want to work with more than one file at a time. And it's a little tricky to work with more than one file at a time because that means I need to open the terminal twice and then open the other file over here. And if you have a terminal emulator like mine that can do that, it's cool. But if you have another, if, you, if you're working on a server and you might not have this, it would be cool if I could do it in Vim, right? Well, turns out that you can. So, and this is how you do it. If you want to open two windows side by side, all you have to do is press Control plus W, and then press letter V for a vertical split. To open a new window below the current window, all you have to do is Control W. And then letter S, not J. I don't know why I put J there. It's not J, it's S. So I need to fix that. I, I, uh, somebody please uh, remind me to fix that because that's, that's wrong. So if I do Control W and then letter V, notice that a new window opens on the other side. If I want to open another window in the bottom to open three, to work with three files at a time, I can. 
Control W and then letter S. If I want to move from here to here to here, it's simple. All I have to remember is H, J, K, and L. H is for the, for the, uh, for the left, J is for bottom, K is for up, and then L is for the right. So if I want to move to the right, I do Control W and then L. And now it is that I'm on the right now. And here I am just going to uh, open. Let me open a file. By the way, you can also use the command open if you want to open a file. And I want to open my bash RC file. Oh, I don't have a, I didn't, I didn't provide the right uh, bash RC. Da, 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 da. Okay. I want to open another file over here in the bottom. Control W and then J. I'm oh, sorry, not J. Control W and then H to move to the right, and then Control W J to move to the bottom. This is tricky to get used to. Don't expect to get it on the beginning. It takes practice to get used to it. Open home period bash uh, underscore aliases one two three files does that make sense yeah again don't expect to get it on the first try read it and read it and read it because this is tricky it's not as straightforward as anything else it takes a different mindset to get used to working in vim Okay, let's quit that. Let's quit all. Let's go back to our presentation real quick. I gave you this little visual over here, so you know it's easy for you to remember. Useful to know, and I promise I'm almost done, because I know some of you, uh, some of you have other classes to go to. So, if you want to read files, right? You can do shift O, and that is going to allow you to enter a new line on the particular file you're working on. I like this one over here because if you're working on a file and you want the content of that file to be inside the new file, you can use the R option. So colon R and then the file, and that's going to insert the text in the particular file that you're working on. That's easy seen. It's, it's easier to see it than uh, than explaining it. So let me take it, let me show you. Let me see what we have here. We have hello. So I'm gonna do cat hello dot md. Notice that in hello dot md I have all of this stuff, right? I'm gonna open food.txt. Vim food.txt. I wanna put the content of uh i think it's file no what was no what was the name of the file again it was oh there you go hello py the content of this file is gonna get inside this file right so whatever is inside here whatever is inside this file is gonna go and put it over here Isn't that cool? Here is something even cooler. I can run a command. Oh, there you go. I did that. I did the R. Come on. See, I think I got the syntax wrong. Nope, I got the syntax right. Plus ls minus a. The R command also 
here, because this is what I want to do, allows you to run a particular command. And the output of the command, instead of being displayed to the screen, put it inside the file. For example, I can do r pound plus and then L the ls command and then put the output of the ls command inside the particular file that I'm working on. That is cool. And uh, this is the end of the presentation. Um, here is a cheat sheet that you can use. Let me clear that out. Clear. Here is a cheat sheet that you can use. It has pretty much everything we talk about today and, and more. And here's a couple of tutorials online on YouTube that I found that are very informative that you can watch in your free time if you so desire. I'm going to call attendance. Uh, if you need to leave, put a message in Slack and I'll mark you present. Professor Chris Melly wrote in the chat that she had to leave early. Perfect. <laughs>